Hello class, this is section 4.3 on the Middle and New Kingdoms. We have three main ideas for this section. Uh, number one, the Middle Kingdom was a period of stable government between periods of disorder. Number two, the New Kingdom was the peak of Egyptian trade and military power, but their greatness did not last. And number three, work and daily life were different among Egypt's classes. So here's a timeline showing the different periods of Egyptian history. Uh, the Old Kingdom we studied in the last section. Um, so this first part of this of this section is on the Middle Kingdom, which lasted uh, between uh, 2050 to 1750 BC. So that's about 300 years that it lasted. So for the Middle Kingdom, um, sorry, going back to the Old Kingdom, right, transitioning into the Middle Kingdom. Things started to fall apart during the Old Kingdom. Um, the pharaohs couldn't get the money they needed uh, for to, to build their pyramids and other expenses. So that's this picture of the guy with the empty wallet represents. And what happened was nobles took power for 160 years. So um, the term nobles, remember, it means um, they're like the wealthy landowners, right? from the last section. And so, yeah, they took power for about 160 years. Uh, eventually the Pharaoh retook power uh, around 2050 BC, uh, 2050 BC, right? And that's where that number comes in there. That's the start of the Middle Kingdom, 2050 BC. Um, and then eventually the Hyksos invaded with horses, chariots, and advanced weapons, which you see here on the left. And the this group of people came in, and they ruled as pharaoh for, pharaohs for 200 years. Um, but eventually, in the mid-1500s, Amos of Thebes drove out the Hyksos and started the new kingdom. So you've got the old kingdom, followed by the period where the nobles took power for, for 160 years. Then you've got the middle kingdom. Then the Hyksos took power, and then eventually Amos of Thebes, who's here on the right statue of him, drove out the Hyksos and started the New Kingdom, which we can see here. So the New Kingdom is um, the period from about 1550 to 1050 BC, in which in Egyptian history, when Egypt reached the height of its power and glory. So... Um, the new kingdom would be kind of the period we, we would come to uh, see as when we think of ancient, ancient Egyptian history, we would probably be thinking of the new kingdom um, in terms of all the monuments and everything. But yeah, uh, from 1550 to 1050 BC, which is about uh, 500 years. So um, the, during the new kingdom, they had a huge empire from the Euphrates river down to southern nubia so nubia is down here um the phrase would be somewhere in here right so it spanned all all the way north to south from there um during the new kingdom they controlled invasion routes so they would have you know prevented other civilizations other armies from coming in and invading and they had a very strong army which this picture represents we have two more important terms here um, the first being Queen Hatshepsut. She was an Egyptian queen. She worked to increase trade with places outside of Egypt and ordered many impressive monuments and temples built during her reign. So trade and monuments, she was very important with. And then the second term here uh, is trade routes, which are uh, paths followed by traders. You can see here in this picture, some of those trade routes you can see throughout throughout Egypt, all the arrows and the different types of resources being traded. And you can see the span of the new kingdom is all this purple area, right? So from the Euphrates down to um, Nubia, right? All along the Egyptian, all around, all along the Nile River, right? All along the uh, eastern bank of the Mediterranean Sea. And so... Let's go back here real quick. A couple more facts about the New Kingdom. So uh, conquest led to increased trade. So as you know, the army took over different areas, they were able to 
establish tr um, trade with those places. And so more trade. Queen Hatshepsut pushed trade into Greece, which is over here. Asia Minor, which is up here. And uh, Punt, which is down here, kind of in that Nubia area. And they used wealth to promote art and architecture, which is pretty cool that they use their wealth to you know, build fancier buildings and promote art. Um, then you've got Ramses the Great. Ramses the Great was an Egyptian pharaoh. He expanded the kingdom and built lasting temples at Karnak, Luxor, and Abu Simbel. He is often considered one of Egypt's greatest pharaohs. Uh, so here's a, a statue of him, a very large statue of him. Here's a, a rendering. Um, and, um, he fought the Hittites for many years and also built forts in the West to fight off invasions. So here's an example of what one of those forts might've looked like, but he, again, he fought the Hittites and built forts in the West to fight off invasions. The last sec, the last section is on work and daily life. So here's that, that, um, triangle of Egyptian society that we talked about, um, before, but. Um, it was a complex society with many different jobs. Um, you have the scribes, right, kind of in the middle here, who worked for the government and they weren't taxed, right? They didn't have to pay taxes, so that that made allowed them to build wealth and get rich. You have the artisans and the craftspeople um, who made things, and they often worked for the government or for temples, making stuff for for those institutions. Uh, also within the craftspeople group would be artists who would create art in the pharaoh's tombs. Um, farmers, which by far were the largest group, they gave crops to pharaoh as taxes. So that's their their taxes were the, the crops they grew. And also the pharaoh could force them into labor at any time, right? Which is rough, right? To build his, his monuments and his pyramids and stuff. And the last uh, thing here is more than a lot of these other ancient civilizations, women had quite a few rights in ancient Egypt, right? So like they could own property and stuff. Um, we are, we just talked, I just talked about Queen Hatshepsut, right? She was pretty much in charge of Egypt for a stretch of time. So a woman could be, could lead, could lead the civilization. That's, it's pretty cool. Uh, and the big idea for this section is that during the middle and new kingdoms, order and greatness were restored to Egypt. All right. Thank you.